Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I know that I have not been very active on this platform for many, many months, definitely over a year, maybe close to two years now. In 2023, I've published only one video, which was like a short about an update to my plugin. But I really, I didn't really make a proper YouTube video about astrophotography, photography, filmmaking, or any of the subjects I would usually cover on this channel for a long time. And the reason for that, and you might be wondering, maybe you've forgotten about me, maybe you were wondering, actually some people DM'd me on Instagram about, did I ditch this YouTube channel? Is it dead? Am I gonna be coming back and, you know, Am I still alive? <laughs> and I appreciate those comments actually. It shows that my YouTube channel was really something that you guys liked very much and you liked my videos and you missed my videos. And I gotta say, I missed this too. But to be honest, in short words, the channel is not dead. I will be coming back. This video is not yet a full on comeback. I mean, there's gonna be this video and then there's gonna be still a couple of months before I will start making consistently the videos on YouTube. And the reason for that is that I am moving to a new house. I'm actually building a new house, which takes a lot of time. It uh, it takes, you know, it, it's been like almost three years since I bought the land and then to get all the permits and everything, it just took a lot of effort and a lot of time. But the house is close to being finished. It's gonna be finished this year. I'm gonna be moving in there um, probably late summer, maybe fall this year. And when I do that, I will have a proper studio. I will have a new sort of setup for astrophotography. And uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna be great. I just felt, to be honest, uninspired creating in the old space. And also it became unfeasible at some point because my basement is pretty much full of boxes with stuff to the new house. So there isn't really any space to, to film videos in anyways. But before I actually move, and I tear down everything from the old apartment. I wanted to make this one last video here in this space. And it's a video about the thing that you see right here, which is my semi sort of permanent setup, semi permanent observatory for doing astrophotography with a telescope and a motorized mount on a balcony, because I will be tearing this down soon to move it over to the new house. And before I tear it down, I figured it is a good way, it's a good opportunity to actually show you guys how I set this up because it actually is pretty clever. I was able to have this, what you see here is the mount. I will be uncovering this in a moment, just bear with me please. <laughs> um, I've been able to keep the mount under this cover for probably like two years now here on this balcony. I haven't moved it. So it's, it's set up here and I'm ready to go whenever there is a clear sky. And the uh, setup time is, is really quick. Uh, I will be bringing a telescope in a second. Uh, actually, wait a sec. Yeah, so this is the telescope. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff already on the telescope and this is key to this setup uh, to be able to quickly mount it on the mount is that I don't have to connect everything every single time. A lot of stuff and basically all of the stuff that could remain on the OTA, on the telescope itself, is in there. So there are only four cables that I need to connect to the mount to get it up and running. And I will show you exactly what those four cables are and how to achieve this sort of uh, setup that I have right here. So one moment. And I am back. So let's take this off. What you can see here, this is the um, telescope cover from GeoOptic. Uh, it's made to basically serve this purpose to cover a telescope mount and it covers it from the rain from from snow obviously basically from water and it also protects it from the uv rays from the sun as you can see right now we have a pretty sunny day hopefully i'm not overexposed that will be embarrassing but it protects it from the uv as well because the uv can damage your equipment can make your black paint you know fade be kind of gray and it's just not good for electronics overall. So this cover is supposed to serve this purpose. And I gotta say it served this purpose pretty well. I had some pretty wild weather here. Um, maybe not hurricanes, but I had some strong winds. I had some severe rainfalls and it survives, survived uh, pretty well all these months, winter, summer, all of the seasons across two years. So I definitely recommend it. Uh, I will put the link down below in the description too all of this stuff that is relevant for this video, this cover included. So let's take this off. As you can see, I have it uh, sort of held down here with some, with some elastic rope and some stuff from Ikea to keep your, uh, 
uh, food like flower bags uh, sealed from from stuff uh, like bugs uh, so these are just this is just a piece of elastic rope that I bought on a gas station it's supposed to hold down stuff on the in the trunk of your car so it doesn't move around as you as you drive so let's take this off let's put this aside I haven't actually taken this off for quite a while so hopefully everything is still okay down there let's see All right, and here we have the mount. And as you can see, uh, there are already a bunch of cables attached to the mount and it was all under this uh, rainproof uh, cover. Uh, the mount is on a tripod. There's, there are already the counterweights attached here. So once I attach the scope, I don't need to mess around with the counterweights. I already know the position of the counterweights that suits my exact telescope well so i don't have to spend time doing that when i'm setting up so let's actually put a scope on this uh, and i'm gonna go from the other side and show you in detail um, some of the connections some of the solutions that i have used i know there's something down below that you cannot see in the frame that is pretty important to to mention so let's put the scope first and let's walk you through the details. So we are just putting the scope on the mount, standard stuff. Just make sure to not drop it, obviously. Actually, wait a second, I haven't done this in a while. This needs to be on the, on the other side because it interferes with the focuser the screws interfere with the focuser if i drop my scope now on camera it's gonna be kind of funny right hasn't happened to me yet so hopefully it won't happen but if it does at least i will have it on camera okay let's just tighten these Okay, I think it, I think it sits well. Let's just give it a, another round of tightening. Okay, I think it works well. And as you can probably maybe see or anticipate already, if you're doing this on a balcony, you're gonna have limited amount of space. And if you try to do it, maybe um, you dismiss the idea of putting a mount on the balcony because you thought that it's, it's never gonna fit and once the telescope starts swinging and uh, pointing at targets it's gonna hit the railing or it's gonna hit the wall and i gotta tell you it's 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 a pretty snug fit right here i'm gonna loosen both clutches to kind of show you how it works so as you can see right here you probably can see this railing here when the telescope is moving around, it is it is pretty close. It's like maybe t three inches here, so it is pretty close. So once you if you do that on the balcony, you need to make sure that when your telescope <laughs> I was gonna say telephone, not telephone telescope swings, it doesn't actually hit any obstruction. In this case, I am clear with this on the front side of the telescope, and also on the back side of the telescope. Look at this; it's even closer. It's like one inch maybe. So it's really close it's pretty close uh, this is a refractor 480 millimeters i think it's a pretty small scope but it's not like a red cat it's bigger than a red cat so uh, this kind of a refractor would fit on most balconies i would say if it were or like a newtonian there would be no chance so just you know manage your expectations and on this other side as you can see we have this wall and it's a similar story it's a pretty close call here but it fits on the back side and also fits on the front side. And if we swing it around, swing it around to the other side, yeah, it fits. I, I know it fits because I've been using this extensively and I didn't have any collision. Um, yeah, so um, I'm gonna go to the other side and I'm gonna show you some of the connections. You can see probably some stuff dangling already here. I'm gonna show you how I set this up um yeah one sec 
Okay, so let me take the camera off the tripod so you can see better. So basically what we have here on the telescope itself uh, is we have a bunch of stuff here. We have a ZWO camera here on the back. We have a filter wheel. We have um, an automatic rotator. This is the stuff that rotates the field of view. So I can actually rotate my field of view depending on which target am I switching to uh, during the night. And hang on a sec. Okay, I just need to change my sort of focus area because I was seeing some weird behavior. So anyways, this is the field rotator from uh, Pegasus Astro. I have a video about this already, so you can check this out. We have the guide camera, we have a guide scope, we have the scope itself. Right here on the front, we have uh, a PC. This black thing is actually a... Um, fully fledged PC with a Windows 10 installed on it. This is a Mili Quieter 2. I believe there are some uh, newer versions of this. Uh, so I'm gonna put some links in the description, but the cool part about this PC is that I don't have to connect an external PC and run some USB cables. It's just on the scope. I don't need to you know, connect it separately. And I can just connect it to this via remote Chrome desktop, or I think it's called like this. And I can control this uh, PC, which in turn is connected, as you can see, this is connected. Um, this is connected to the camera, this is connected to the mount, this is connected to, there's a USB hub even here, which connects to you know the focuser, the filter wheel, or whatever needs to be connected. And here is the power, which is normally a USB-C uh, kind of a plug, but in order to avoid having a USB-C sort of cable dangling from here to my power source, I just use this adapter. As you can see, let me let me just take this off. This is an adapter from uh, USB-C uh, on this side, on the right side, to DC plug on the left side. And then I can just use a DC cable that I have right here, which I'm already using to kind of power my mount and stuff and use a splitter to basically use one power source to cover, um, to power both the PC and uh, my mount. Actually, there are four things on this, on this telescope that needs power, that needs DC power. One of them is the, one of them is the PC, uh, one of them is the mount itself. So these are two items. Then there's the camera and then there's the rotator. So I actually have four elements that needs power and right down below as you can see i have this um i have this kind of a splitter so there's basically one extension cord this white thing that will go into a wall socket in my house here on the balcony and to it i have connected um two power adapters one uh one power adapter from you know wall plug to um to dc and another one, the same thing. And they are kind of called up here. And this is actually uh, one of them right here. And the second one is probably down below in the bucket. And the bucket, you might be wondering, why do I need the bucket? The reason for the bucket is that, I'm gonna zoom out sort of manually. The reason is that there's, it's literally just a bucket full of bricks that's supposed to hold down the telescope because without it, I actually once had a situation where there was a strong wind and it picked up on the cover that kind of uh, acted as a, as a sail and it knocked over my mount a little bit. Uh, luckily, nothing happened to my equipment because it just basically uh, touched one of the walls here and stood like this. It didn't actually collapse all the way to, to the ground. But once I sort of mounted this bucket of bricks, everything is nice and solid and there, there has been no wind that was able to uh, to knock over this mount. So this is literally just a bucket of bricks. I think this is a good tip with this. You don't need to drill in your uh, in your flooring or anything to, to have like a hook that would hook some ropes down below. Just a bucket of bricks and then hold it down uh, onto the this tray of a, of a telescope mount and it is rock solid. So I have these two uh, these two power adapters and I have um, I have these splitters. One of the splitters is right here. 
It's literally just a splitter that would split one DC cable into two DC cables. One powers the mount and the other one would go into this cable, which as you can see comes from the telescope. This is one of the four cables that come from the telescope. And I would just connect it here and this will give power to, I believe, my PC. Uh, so this is one cable uh, that goes up, one of the four. The other one comes from this. This is uh, just USB type A. I have this, uh, this white thing that basically is like a controller that would uh, pass the, uh, the input to the other end or not programmatically. I can c uh, control this via an app that connects to my Wi-Fi. So I can basically remotely power whatever is plugged into the other end of this white brick I can remotely power it on or off and what I control with this is my dew heaters so basically I have this um, cable where is it somewhere down here yeah probably this one so this cable would basically this is the second out of the four this is the second cable that will go up here onto my telescope and it would connect uh, to this tiny USB hub and this USB hub would power two of the dew heaters one for the guide scope and one for the telescope so these are the two cables out of the four that I have covered uh, the third one would be a DC power coming from somewhere here that would power the camera and the rotator and the fourth one, the final cable, is the USB cable that goes from, uh, I believe it's, I believe it's this one. So this is just USB Type A, and this will go from the mount, uh, from the mount from here, uh, from uh, where is like from the <laughs> from the hand controller, from here, this one, and it will go and connect to the PC. So there's an empty slot uh, somewhere uh, here. I don't know if you can see this. Wait a minute. Can you see this? Uh, can you see this? Yes, you can. There's an empty uh, slot here in the hub. And into that, I would connect the final fourth cable that goes between the mount and the telescope itself. And that is pretty much it. So these are all the cables that I need to connect. Everything else is already connected. So the, the guide camera is connected to the PC, the camera, the imaging camera is connected, the filter wheel is connected, everything is connected and everything is nice and snugly sort of held down. So there are no dangling cables apart from the four that I have mentioned. I'm using these Velcro strips to nicely have everything snug to to the cameras or to the other parts so if i can find this on amazon i will uh, put the link down below in the description as well and this is pretty much my imaging rig so let me actually go to the other side let me put the camera on the tripod so i'm back here sorry for this this was my neighbor's dog barking but anyways that's my imaging rig and um, you may be asking the question, okay, what's so, what's so cool about this if, you know, I'm on the balcony with the very limited space, what's the advantage? Well, the advantage is that I can basically shoot all night whenever there's a clear night. I'm just sleeping in a room that is right next to the setup. I don't need to drive anywhere. I don't need to sleep in my car. I don't need to sacrifice my sleep. I don't need to sacrifice my days off at work or anything. I can just image whenever I can. Uh, and I can set up very, very quickly. As you can see, I don't even, most of the times, I don't even need to polar align because everything is already aligned. Maybe the act of taking the scope off and putting it on could knock the polar alignment out of, out of the alignment just a little bit, but it's easy to just realign it. And for the record, I don't even have sight of Polaris. And the one major drawback of this setup is that I have these obstructions. I have the wall, I have uh, like a half roof above me. So a lot of the sky is actually obstructed and this is probably the most annoying drawback of this entire setup is that it, I cannot image the entire sky if I wanted to. And in the new house, I will have a 360 view over the night sky. So 
I will be able to shoot more targets and I will have more freedom in, in picking my targets. Right now I can see the southern sky, I can see the western sky, but when it comes to north and east, pretty much everything is blocked off. Um, but even with these obstructions, I was able to produce a lot of very cool images from this setup. And even though this is in a city, it's not under a dark sky or anything. I'm just using narrowband filters to cope with the light pollution. And I think this is a very, very feasible setup because to be honest, what's holding back a lot of people from doing deep sky astrophotography with a telescope on one thing, there's the cost of all the equipment, that's true. But on the other hand, it is time. It's the effort of going somewhere, setting it up, waiting for the images to come. And oftentimes you have to accept the fact that you have very little data because just simply you don't have enough time to shoot for longer. But with this setup in your own house on a balcony, you can shoot for as long as the weather permits. You can collect a lot of data. And even in the city, even if ob with obstructed view of the sky, if you can image I don't know, three hours per night, and you can do it for like 20 nights in a row, you're gonna have a lot more data than you would have during one night in a, in a location with, with no obstructions. So I think it's definitely worth it. And you don't even need to have a backyard, like, you know, most people living in cities, depending on which part of the world, obviously, but don't have backyards. I don't have backyard in this apartment. I just have a balcony. A lot of people only have a balcony. And even with a balcony, even if you have a roof above and you have neighbors and you have obstructions, you have trees, whatever, you can still probably see a portion of the sky. And if you can set this up in a way that it's easy to set up, you don't need to put in the time to set it up. It's easy. If it's easy, you're going to do it more often. If you're going to do it more often, you're going to get more data. You're not going to get better results and you're going to enjoy it more. If it's a chore to set it up, to drive, you know, be sleep deprived, if it's a chore, you're not gonna enjoy doing that. But doing it this way, it's very, very enjoyable. And I've been enjoy I have been enjoying it very much. In the new setup, in the new location, in the new house, I will have more room. I will be able to buy like a Newtonian telescope, which I'm planning to do. Maybe I can have side by side two mounts. I don't know, we'll see. I will have more areas of the sky visible and unobstructed to image. And it's gonna be great. So uh, definitely I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully you can stick around on the channel and don't unsubscribe and wait for, for me, for my channel 2.0 to really hit YouTube and social platforms, which I am definitely going to do at some point when I set up in the new house. It's gonna be, it's gonna be great. But for now, you know, hopefully this video is instructive. Uh, you can set up a similar build. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them down below uh, in the uh, comment section and I will answer them. Uh, I think this is a pretty cool setup. Some of the items here that I glossed over, I probably covered in my other videos, so you can look around on my channel. And yeah, uh, this is great. And see you guys in the, um, in the new location in a couple of months, I promise. I will come back, so don't unsubscribe. Uh, I just ask for a little bit more patience, but the new location, the new studio and the new adventures are gonna be worth the wait. I can promise you that. So, see you next time.